David was out at 4 o'clock this morning. Stand right there, buddy. And still made it to Sunday school. He drove all the way to Morgantown to uh, see the ears get to whooping. But anyway, we're glad David came out. He told me, he said, he didn't have the time to uh, get his pants. Said, he apologized. I said, buddy, you come any way you want to, just so you're here. So, let's give David a hand for being out at 4 o'clock in the morning. All right, David, you can go to class, buddy. I just wanted to pick on them people that was too lazy to get out of bed this morning. Come to church. All through this quarterly, going back to the beginning of the quarterly, it's, it's been all about different promises that God had made. The promise He made to Noah that, that the earth would not be destroyed again by water and the signal of that coming through the rainbow. And We learned about His promise to Abraham that He would multiply His seed and that His seed would be a blessing to all nations and how that same promise was delivered to Isaac and to Jacob and all on down. And Then last week we we heard about God's promise to deliver His people out of bondage in Egypt. We know that Joseph had brought his father's house to Egypt during a time of famine and they lived in Egypt and they prospered, but eventually a new king came to reign in Egypt who didn't know Joseph and didn't know the people and, and for the next hundreds of years they became slaves under the Egyptians. Come on, Doug. Well, last week we heard God's promise that He would bring those people out. God told Moses that He had heard his people's cry. And this week is when we see the fulfillment of that promise. We see that God brings plagues against Egypt to try to soften Pharaoh's heart. He sends blood and, and boils and locusts and lice and flies and frogs. And this morning we see the final plague that he's going to bring against Egypt being the death of the firstborn. And this will be the final thing that convinces Pharaoh oh, to let the people go. As Moses speaking God's word to Pharaoh had, had commanded Pharaoh to do, this would be the final straw. Right, but before that could happen, something had to be done. So if you, uh, if you have it this morning, I want to make sure that, that we get this. This is a familiar story and sometimes it's easy to look over it. But I'm going to read the first verse, and then you all are going to read the second verse back to me, and we'll just switch back and forth like that. Okay. So, the first verse of chapter 12 of Exodus. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for a house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up until the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head with his legs, and with the Puritans thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall ye eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, 
will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. This day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Pay attention to that, that last verse. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. And true to God's promise, the children of Israel followed these instructions. Each house took a lamb to them. And on the appointed time, they slaughtered the lamb. And they, took the, they killed it in the, in the doorway of the house. And they took the blood that was gathered there and they struck it upon the, the side doorpost and above the lintel. And that night that God had appointed, He passed through the land of Egypt. And sure enough, every firstborn in that country, from the lowest servant's house even into the, the palace of Pharaoh, the firstborn died. And it was that night that Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron to his chambers and, and he orders them to leave. He says, take your people and get out of here. And as God had promised, he told them to eat their meal in haste. He told them to eat it with their shoes on and with their staffs in their hands. Right, right. Because he knew that it would be a, a flight in the middle of the night. Sure enough, that's what happened. In the middle of the night, the children of Israel get up and they leave the land of bondage. And this is the beginning of the, Israel's return to the promised land. The beginning of God's promise that He would deliver them back to the land that He had promised Abraham their father. And from then on, this same feast that God had asked them to commit that night, the slaughter of the lamb, the bitter herbs, the unleavened bread. Come on, sir. Every year they kept that same feast yeah. for a memorial. When they were in the desert, when they wandered in the desert for 40 years because of their disobedience, they still kept this feast in the first month of the year. Most this was such an important occurrence in their calendar that God changed their calendar to set it around them. <coughs> Passover is the first <coughs> festival of the Jewish calendar. It was so important that He changed time as they measured it to measure it against this Passover. And even when they were in the desert wandering, they still kept this ordinance and they still kept this, this service before God. You'll look in the book of Joshua right before they make siege of Jericho. They keep the Passover as God had commanded to Moses here. And even when the children of Israel went into captivity under the Babylonians later, it fell out of practice. But when they came back to the promised land, and when they had rebuilt the temple, the very first thing they did at that new temple that God allowed them to build was keep the Passover. And it was all so the people would remember God's deliverance. It says in verse 26 of, of chapter 12, And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What ye mean ye by this service? that ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt, when He smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and the people bowed the head and worshipped. God knew that eventually, if and, and Bobby was talking this morning about remembering God's blessings to us. God knew that eventually if there wasn't something to remind the people of what He had done for them, that it would pass away from their knowledge. So every year, they remembered and they commemorated this mighty deliverance that God had given them because they knew that eventually children would raise up. And Jeremy, I'm sure you know this, children ask a lot of questions. So when you're gathered around the table for this feast and, and all year long you're eating bread with leaven in it and it's fluffy and, and you know tasty and it's, it's good, all of a sudden you're having dinner and the bread is flat and it's tasteless. And, you, and, the, and he knew the children would ask, what are we doing? Why is this different? And they would be able to go back and to tell 
son, it hasn't always been like this. Once upon a time, long before you were born, we were slaves on, in a land that was not our own. Amen. And God heard us. And God loving us delivered us from that bondage. And that's why we keep this commemoration. And the child, you, you think, might have asked, well, why did all the firstborn of Egypt have to die? And their parents probably would tell them because that's what it took to pierce Pharaoh's heart. Yes. But a child asking questions, continuing to ask questions as a child does, they said, well, why did we have to kill the lamb? Mm -hmm. Why was that? Why did we have to do that? If God knows who we are, why didn't He know where we were at? Why didn't He just pass over us? Why didn't a lamb have to die? Why did we have to put its blood on the doorpost? And I don't know what answers they would have come up with because at that time they didn't have a good answer. But I'll tell you, Come on, 1,500 years after this initial Passover, yes. a spotless, sinless yes. lamb yes. Oh, yes. would provide deliverance. Yes. Come on, sir. Yeah. Oh. Not just for Israel, although it was offered to them first, yes. but to anyone that wants to take it. Yeah. You're right. Over time, this blessed me this week. Over time, as they would commemorate the Passover, I'm sure when we all gather, it's it's almost Thanksgiving, and 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 we we all have certain traditions that we do. We everybody has their own place at the table, and probably in your house, there's somebody in particular that cuts the turkey. There's somebody that brings the hot rolls, or somebody that makes the pumpkin pie. We're creatures of habit, so habits develop and traditions develop. Right. Well, over time, as they kept this Passover, traditions developed that allowed them to, to tell the story of, of this Passover that we read about this morning. And it's that same order. It's called the Passover Cedar, S-E-D-E-R. And it's still kept today. There were bitter herbs, as God had told Moses that they should eat of Still today, there are, there's unleavened bread that they partake of. Lamb is the, is the main dish that they eat at this dinner. And then there are four cups of wine that they drink. And it's four cups of wine. And the significance of it are the four promises that God had made to Moses and the children of Israel in the sixth chapter of Exodus. God said, Wherefore say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord. First promise. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. Number two, and I will rid you out of their bondage. Number three, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. And the fourth promise, and I will take you to me for a people. And I will be to you a God. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. So at the beginning of this meal, someone rises and they, they're holding a cup of wine. And they say, this is the cup of sanctification. Yeah. I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. And after that first cup, they take some matzah, which is the unleavened bread. And they break the matzah. And half of it is wrapped in a white cloth. Mm -hmm. And it's hidden and then they tell the Passover story of how God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt. And then it's time for the second cup. I will rid you out of their bondage. Uh -huh. The second cup is the cup of deliverance. And at this point, everybody at the table gets up and they cleanse themselves. They wash their hands and, and they prepare for the meal. And then the bitter herbs are served. And it's to remind them of the bitterness of the slavery that they had to go through. Bless you, Zach. And then it's the main meal. The pure and spotless lamb. Roasted according to, to the, the pre preparation that God had told Moses. <coughs> and then after the main meal, that matzah, that unleavened bread that was broken and hidden, 
is brought back to the table. Now what struck me this week is that this is probably the same meal that Jesus was eating right before He went to the cross. Mm -hmm. This meal, this order that I'm telling you about, about the cups of wine and the, and the, and the, the unleavened bread and the lamb that served, the same meal that Jesus would take with His disciples just hours before He was to be crucified and killed. And it's after the main meal when that matzah is brought back to the table. The tradition is that it be broken. And that it be passed among the, the, the people who gathered there. And you remember and you think about this. All Jesus' disciples, Jesus Himself being a Jew and all of His disciples were Jews. They had done this every year of their entire lives. Come you on, figure man. if these guys were in their 30s, 20s or 30s, as Jesus was about you know, 33 years old. They've done this at least 20, 30 times. They knew exactly what would happen. They knew that Jesus, evidently being their rabbi, being their leader, he was the one leading this Passover dinner. So they knew that he was going to take this bread and he was going to break it and he was going to give it to them. So imagine their surprise when he took it and instead of saying the things they had heard all, year, all their lives, he took it and said, this is my body. Yes. And he passed it around the table. He said, take, eat. This is my body. And after the matzah, there's the third cup. It's the cup that represents the promise, I will redeem you with a stretched out arm. It's the cup of redemption. And usually when you would present this cup, there's a script that every family goes by when they are having the Passover. Usually this, the script that you go by, it, it calls for God to shed His wrath on Israel's enemies. That's what you read when you drink this third cup. You ask that God dole out wrath on the people that don't recognize Him. And then after that third cup, you issue an invitation to the prophet Elijah because the prophets mm -hmm. had said that Elijah would come back and that he would precede the Messiah. And they would even set out a special cup for the prophet Elijah just in case he would show up. Yeah. And they would send a child to the door to open it and see if Elijah was out there. <laughs> and then at the end of the third cup, they would welcome the coming Messiah. But Jesus didn't do anything. Breaking with the script, He took a cup and gave thanks and gave it to them. Saying, drink ye all of it. For this is My blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. He didn't call for wrath. He didn't call for Elijah. Elijah had already been there. They had seen him on the Mount of Transfiguration. You're right, and John the Baptist had already fulfilled that oh, promise that there sure. would be somebody making the way for the Messiah. And he didn't call for the Messiah to come because the Messiah was right there at the table. Hey. And he said, See, the commemoration of the Passover is a commemoration of the covenant that God had made to Abraham. But yeah. Jesus says, I give unto you a new testament. Jesus says, I give unto you a new covenant. He says, this is my blood. Uh -huh. And He doesn't call for wrath, but He calls for love. Yeah. We find that Jesus, after He had done this, what we now call, what was then called Passover, what we now call communion, He says, do this in remembrance of Me. Because He knew that someday when we would keep this thing, our children would ask us, why are we doing this? What does this mean? Why the unleavened bread? Why the fruit of the vine? And we would be able to tell them about this spotless, sinless Lamb yeah. that died to deliver not just Israel, not just, not just God's chosen people, but everybody. And that when the blood is applied Death passes over us. The destroyer Amen. has no effect on us. Amen. Bless you, Zach. The children will ask, why Jesus? Why, why is that what it took? Like they probably ask about the lambs. Why did He have to die? 
And I don't have a good answer for that. I don't know why that's what it took. God, but I know that if there had been another way, God probably would have found it. But I do know this much. That Jesus evidently, when He was having that last Passover with His disciples, didn't finish it. There was one promise left. One cup of wine that He didn't partake of. It's the promise that I will make, that I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and you shall know that I am the Lord your God. Jesus said, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine uh -huh. until that day when I drink it mm. new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. That fourth cup is the cup of restoration. In the traditional Passover, and it's the same one that's still kept today, when you drink that fourth cup, you make a request that God will deliver His people back to Israel, back to Jerusalem. It's said that this year we are slaves, next year in Jerusalem. And that's how the Passover service is ended. But Jesus said He wouldn't drink again until He was in His Father's kingdom. And that's the promise that still remains. That's why I believe he didn't finish. <coughs> that's why he didn't finish the, the service. Because that promise was yet to be fulfilled. In Revelation, John, hearing from God Almighty Himself, he says, God says, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst fountain of the water of life free. It's that fourth cup. Amen. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. God said, I will take you to me for a people. That's the new covenant. All of us. Not just Israel, but all of us. God says, if yes. you take of this cup, yes. if you accept this sacrifice that my son, the spotless blemishless lamb has given. He says, I will take you to me for a people, and I will be to you a God, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God, which bringeth you out from under the burdens. He said in Exodus of the Egyptians, but now it's out of the burdens of our sins. Through the sacrifice of the lamb, through his promise of sanctification, of deliverance, Come on, Jack. of redemption, and finally that promise that were still waiting on being fulfilled, the promise of restoration. Amen. The people that were in slavery, the people that were in bondage, bitter bondage, hard bondage, people that had no hope, through the sacrifice of that lamb and through the shedding of blood, through the Passover, they're made free. Yes. Thank you. Bless you, God.